Welcome back everybody here on the YouTube channel slash TELUS Optic TV with uh, Tri-Cities Community Television. And today I'm very excited because we are as always in the Michael Wright Art Gallery, which is a mobile studio for us. And we're always excited when we have new artists come into town. Uh, but this guy's been around for a while. It's uh, Brad Nickerson. So welcome very, to- Very, very new. Yeah, <laughs> I am like really a new artist. Welcome Brand to- Brand new. Well, I, I don't- Emerging. I'm I an emerging artist. Well, you emerged because <laughs> I saw emerged. you as a politician, an activist, and actually, you know, this artist popped out and that, I was- I That was, was all performance art. Perf I, I'm a performance artist. <laughs> so you're, you're basically, uh, uh, we've got a graphic uh, comic that you put together. I, I saw your name on the list and I, and I know it's taken a long time to put it together because uh, Poco Heritage is doing the F words, which uh, for those of us out there who don't know F is like four Fs in Poco. One is famine, one is fire and a couple of floods. And uh, you were, I guess, charged with the beautiful job of turning this thing into a graphic novel. And we'll show a few folks in there. So just, uh, this stuff is beautiful. Like tell, tell us how it started and, and what, what got it going. Okay. So first I'm going to say it's Poco Heritage Museum oh. and Archives, right? That, yeah. that, so, and lots of people don't know where it is in Port Coquitlam. So if you're, as you're watching this and you want to know where our, uh, our local museum is, it's on McLean Avenue across from the bowling alley, right beside City Hall. Please come and check it out. It's an, it's an awesome community asset that uh, we should be thrilled to have for multiple reasons that I think that it'd be great for us to get into later. But, um, and the second thing is, the F words in Port Coquitlam, it comes from a period of time for, uh, from around 1918 to 24, 26. In that period of time, we, the city went through four big disasters. You were right, the first one was the flu, the second one, I'm not absolutely sure what it is in order, but it was a flu, the fire, a flood, and then it was a financial ruin. Those are the F words that we have. All of those things nearly wiped Port Coquitlam off the map before it even got started, right after it did get started. So this, this project um, was an attempt to, or an attempt, and I think it's pretty successful, it was an attempt to show that history in a way that is, uh, um, innovative in the museum world. It's not something that you see very often in illustrated history in a comic form. And, and the reason we did it that way, um, kudos to the, the board and I believe it was the, the museum coordinator be previous to um, Kanchen, who we have now, was Kelly Brown. I think they they came up with this idea together to do something that would reach younger audiences and maybe even particularly boys. This is a, graphic novels are a form of art that are reaching into education now. A long time ago when maybe you and I were kids, comic books were seen as a low form of art. Um, they were m much more commercial and you'd never see them in schools or at least teachers would frown upon them. Now, graphic novels are something that are uh, winning the highest literary awards. There's uh, this, this terrific um, book about Auschwitz and the Holocaust called Mouse, and it's won a Pulitzer Prize. That's amazing. And then there are other books that are won Newber the Newbery Award and the Caldecott Award for children's, uh, best children's literature. So graphic novels, art in this form, is, is, um, is growing in popularity right now. And so the museum came to me, they, they gave me as a, as a local artist, somebody in our community, they gave me an opportunity to help them tell this story, and I was thrilled to be able to do it. That was a long answer. I'm good at talking. Yeah. But, <laughs> That's but the I politician. Got, but the, key, the key thing is, oh, it's, it's art, right? I mean, uh, I know, uh, and you talked about that. Like, we, I was lucky enough to go with our family to uh, the beaches of Normandy, and my son was younger at the time, about eight years old, and uh, I think it was fun to be running around all these, these historical places, but it never really connected to him until we bought a graphic novel of the Normandy invasion. And, and uh, even now he's older and he cleaned out his room, he still kept that graphic novel because there was some uh, element of learning or connection that he found with that, with the place and the history right. which came across. And I, and I saw this stuff and uh, I'm a comic nut, I, love, I do love comics, but, but, but I must say there's a style here, Brad, that's, that's definitely 
Um, tell us about the style, because I don't want I don't want I don't want to prejudge it, but it it's definitely has a nice element to it. It has a nice feel. You can you can hear the sounds, the motion, the emo uh, uh, the emotion and the movement uh, through time. So just give us a sense of what was hard to do about that. May, well, maybe maybe that's what th maybe that's what graphic novels can do by by when 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 a story is mostly words for some younger people, boys sometimes who find it harder, uh, that, that learn to read usually later than, than girls. Um, graphic novels give an opportunity to create a lot more visual cues to what's going on. It helps kids, to, to, it, it, it helps a struggling reader um, decipher the picture, and you're right, those visual clues can sometimes, they, they can trigger our senses in terms of what we know of the world. They can remind us of movies that we might have seen in that time, and they can put sounds into our heads. They can put, they, you know as well as I do, when we, there can be some images, some pictures that we see in our life that can take us to a place and can make us smell and hear things that are obviously not on the page, but they make us remember. And that's what the attempt is to do here. The trick in this particular, so you know, I, I encourage again people to come and see this exhibit. Um, for me, what I found interesting is I, I find in it, I found in my own art as I did this, and this is the first time I, I've done this kind of work, because I, um, as a fine artist I paint, and I paint flowers, I paint still lifes, and, and sometimes I paint scenics. Um, it, very different from this, but in more in my commercial life, I create kids' activity books, which, were, which are much more cartoon, and they're much more anthropomorphic, where we take a character, an animal character, and then we give it human characteristics. In this, we were dealing with real life, real stories, real things, real people. So I found, as I illustrated this, that you'll find three different styles, three different kinds of styles. There's the, the style um, that's based on references of actual real people, like the page that you're on right now is a young man, I can't remember his name. Um, he, he, he's a young man, 18 years old, who went to war uh, from Port Coquitlam, went to war and was struck by the flu while, while, before they found out he was underage and came back. In a, in a sense, it were in a situation like that, we really wanted to try to render him as lifelike as we can, but stay close to being that cartoon thing. So that's, that was one of the styles. And in this particular scene, you also see the, the scenic of the, the, the scene, setting the scene, where we're using an actual place like Aggie Hall and the tents that were all in that area. That, and so that architectural style's there where I tried to use references to show what the time was like. And you'll see also horse and carriages, things that you would see on the street at the time. So I did that architectural um, style that was closer to what a scene would be like. And then at times you'll see my cartoon style come out as well. When we're just depicting a scene that is not necessarily, um, we don't have reference in the, in the museum, but we're creating it from imagination. So there's three kinds of styles that you might see in this exhibit. Yeah, and I guess for, for me, when you, when you look at this, it's uh, uh, how it's laid out, the 80 panels that you have in here. But a, a question for me, when you have the historians or, or the people who had commissioned you this from the Heritage Society, yeah. um, and they just probably just gave you words, right? To, to kind of, here's the story. Yeah. And, and they gave you a couple of things to work on for real pictures and stuff. But how, how, what was their reaction? like when all of a sudden they saw these, these, these panels. I mean, my reaction was, I was amazed, but I mean, I'm thinking people who are just, you know, see it on, on paper, the story, and all of a sudden it's popping out being a, being a graphic novel. Well, so it's funny that you say that, because as you said, as you were asking that question, I was thinking about three distinct stages for this particular thing. There was the first stage where you, you, you just said that the, they, they gave me words. Actually, we, we did it in a, a different, situation. We sat down and they told me the story that they wanted to tell. They told me about the F words and they told me about the things that happened and they weren't sure how we were going to put that in a story. So it was my job to go back, go back, think about this and put it into a series of sketches. They gave me some reference material to go to. They pointed me in the right direction and I came back with um, 
a, a series of pages that showed panels of approximately what they were going to be. And, and great credit to the people at the museum because these sketches were so, they were terrible sketches. They were roughs and I had to explain them. But I, I guess I was able to convince them that I knew where I was trying to go with these very rough things. And the reason why they were rough and terrible is because I was running in the election at the same time. And they gave me so much faith. If I would have won my election, who would they have had to finish this piece of art? It was, it was um, I must have given, like, I must have given them all extra gray hairs in the sense that I, I got a little flaky on them and disappeared for a little while. But I did those initial sketches. They saw what it was. And then um, a lot of credit to uh, Meg McLaughlin, who is the person who put words to this story. Because I showed up with a bunch of pictures. I showed up with a bunch of pictures in the story that they wanted to tell. And I gave her a tremendously difficult task, which is now you've got to put words in these, in these spaces. And I gave her word counts. I said, you gotta, in this panel, you've got to put 25 words. In this one, you get 60 words. And, and to her credit, she worked at it. Re and in that, I have to say, it was probably more of a difficult, uh, difficult job. But she did a great job. And she, she, she told the stories around these pictures in the way that I envisioned it. So that was tremendous. So that was the... The, the second way. And then the last part of that question was, what did they think at the end? And I think it was relief, because they didn't know where I was going with it. They, gave, they had faith in me, and, I, and I, hopefully it was deserved faith, but um, I think they were relieved to see it done, and we relatively on time. I was, it took me much longer than I thought it would. I was about a month and a half late with it. No, not that I was late, but rather the opening was very soon, and we got it done just in time when we thought we'd get it done a month earlier, so. All right, so the last piece here, the, I mean, and I like, the, I like the fact that it looks like it's a broadsheet style here. We got a, we've got some large, large pieces, like but. Like a newspaper. Like a newspaper, but, but is it gonna, it's going into be, now it's in the gallery in the Heritage uh, Museum. Yeah. But, but is it going into a comic and it will be smaller, is that correct? Well, uh, so, um, yes, it was done, it was designed specifically to be um, posters. And there is, and a hope, and I, I, I'm not sure if I should be like presenting that to world, but I also designed it in such a way that what we can do is turn it into a graphic novel. Yeah. And, I, and I, I, that's probably the direction that we're gonna go. We'll have to find out probably in the next few days, but that's, that was the intent. It's designed in such a way that it is a poster, but it can be turned into a comic book as well, which is what's fabulous about it. Would it be this big? Uh, it'll be a, like a, a more like a comic book size or a graphic novel size, which is a traditional comic book size. So I, I want to thank you for coming in. I, when I saw the stuff, I, I was, uh, yeah, it, it was. You were uh, shocked that I could actually. I, th I thought, work who's as Brad an Nickerson? Must be his twin <laughs> because I, I didn't know Brad was that skilled. But this stuff is 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 uh, for those who love comics. It's just a piece of art, uh, and I know I know it took a lot of collaboration. But without the pictures, the the words mean nothing. And I know you, you know, when you see the pictures, you start reading the words. So it's a great job. Uh, so you. so there you go. We got the, the four Fs. They're a the little play on the F, F, bad word F. But there's a, some four Fs in Port Coquitlam. Uh, the graphic novel is displayed in its full poster form. And uh, Brad, uh, or you bring your family down to read it. And I've heard from the Heritage Society that they are going to turn this into a, into a comic. This is a great way to reach out to young audiences. So if you want to learn more about Poco history, especially from 1918 to 1928, uh, please drop down to the Poco Heritage Society, check out the new installation. And again, Brad, thank you very much for coming in. It's, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Pat. Hey, that's good, thanks.